Pakistan, has, as so many has, have said. And as a president, I mean, you're the president of the United States. You can't necessarily uh, protect a friend. This is a man that you appointed the NSA. Once you appoint a man to the NSA, you can't treat him uh, as a friend. Look, I mean, there's, there's many layers. And, and really, where are the checks and balances there, if in fact that's true? Well, po political accountability to the people via elections and or impeachment. That's mm -hmm. the accountability. So uh, to the extent that people want to try to make this obstruction of justice, there's a million different layers why this is not technically obstruction of justice, either as a statutory matter or constitutional matter. But this point, particularly about a corrupt intent, is even worse. Because think about it. The president also has the authority under Article 2 of the Constitution to pardon people. But we don't say, for example, that the president can't pardon cert uh, a certain person because he has a corrupt intent. He, he likes the guy. He's known him for a long time, therefore he can't pardon him. The pardon power, like the power to head the investigative or uh, rest of the executive branch, like the FBI, like the DOJ, is a plenary discretionary authority of the president. He can pardon anybody for any reason he wants to corrupt purpose or no, and he can direct the investigation or non-investigation of any person, corrupt motive or no. Um, you, you don't put discretionary limits on plenary constitutional authority, and if you do, what you do is you invite Article 3, non-elected, politically non-accountable judges, to second-guess the president's authority. You never want to have a constitutional regime that sets up that way. We, the people, can either not vote the president in, uh, in the next election, or we can impeach him. Those are our political pushback mechanisms. Really interesting.